lunches we could have. The Lake Worth Beach CRA meeting. Today is Tuesday, July 11th. The time is 6.03. I just wanted to let everybody know that we're having some technical issues in regards to the live streaming. Maybe it's resolved, is it? Uh, Oh, so it's going to be recorded and posted, but may not be live if not sorted out soon. Um, please, uh, Emily, do the roll call. Miss Ann Fairfax. Here. Miss Donna Kerner. Present. Miss Caroline Shamshi Vasha. Miss Leah Furch. Here. Miss Carla Bloxon. Here. Mr. Daniel Morgan. Here. And Mr. Brendan Lynch. Here. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. In regards to the agenda in front of us, is there any additions, deletions, or reordering? Seeing none, we'll move on to the public comment on non agenda items. Is there any public comment on non agenda items? Yeah, Mayor. Excuse me, everybody. Hi. Betty Resch, 207 South L Street. This is just something to think about. And I, I mentioned it to Joan. Well, there she is. Um, you, may, you may have heard the, the building at 15 South J Street where the clay studio has been for many, many years is really like the only place that we have in the city that's sort of interactive with people and artists can go there and rent spaces cheap and work cooperatively. The building is for sale. I really, I'm not here like, please buy this building. I just, I want to put this, I don't want to plant the seed in your brain of somehow the CRA could help. There's been an offer, they're told, for 450000 It's really quite an amazing space and it's big. And they've been told there's an offer for $450,000 has been made. I don't have verification of that, but I just thought, you know, you might be the, I mean, we're working on our budget right now. Um, so I came to you um, just with the idea that maybe the CRA could somehow either participate with that or in some way, because to lose that little bit of lively, wacky J Street vibe would be kind of a sad thing. And they all work really hard. So that's all. I just want to push it. Thanks for all the work you do. Thanks, Mary. Any other public? Yes. Good evening. My name is Richard Stowe. I reside at 414 North Federal Highway. Um, I came here tonight to speak with you about uh, FDOT uh, public meeting that's taking place right here at City Hall Thursday at 5.30. And although it's not part of the CRA district, it's covering a road that many um, live off of, and it's uh, or on um, Federal Highway, North Federal Highway from 6th Avenue North to the C-51 Canal um, through College Park. And the... Um, we're they're doing some fairly standard safety uh, measures, proposing standard safety measures. We are looking for the public to support some more engaged um, road design. So um, we have like a few uh, thanks to the commission, um, Mayor Betty Resch and the uh, Kim Stokes and other commissioners. Um, the city conducted a. Um, modern, a mini roundabout evaluation for the area south of 6th Avenue North, north to 10th Avenue South. And from that, something really great came away, and that is that the area between 2nd Avenue North and 5th Avenue North, when it gets resurfaced, it's going to go from three lanes to two lanes, and bike lanes will be on the outside. We think there's the same opportunity up in College Park where you have a three three lane, which I call kind of a vestige of uh, Olive Avenue, which was a four lane road and is now a two lane road. And subsequently um, College Park, or excuse me, um, West Palm Beach has added or re, uh, 
redone the road um, so that it includes like bike lanes on either side. So it's it's really a much more comfortable road for all users now. And we'd like to see that um, bike lane extended over the bridge through College Park down to Auburn or uh, Vanderbilt. Um, secondly, we'd like to have um, the city and the FDOT consider like mini roundabouts at um, 7th Avenue, 10th Avenue, 13th Avenue, and possibly even 16th, but especially those three signalized intersections, that gives the, the, the city or the city an opportunity to have like a smoother flowing traffic flow. Uh, as Ken Sides said today in a um, webinar that was hosted by um, CNU, Florida, he said that roundabouts are like 10 times safer than signalized intersections. So it's something I think we want to move toward. Um, they also have other benefits um, in, in the University of Mississippi with the um, uh, and with a, uh, Mississippi DOT um, did a study before and after they installed the very first roundabouts. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. You're welcome. Any other public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. I'll look for a motion and a second, please. I'll move to approve consent. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve consent agenda. All in favor, please state so by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. We'll look for approval of the minutes. We'll do these individually. Uh, we have a June 13th, 2023 minutes. We have a motion and a second for those. I'll make a motion to approve on June 13th, 2023 minutes. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Item B, June 13, 2023, minutes for the fiscal year 24 priority workshop. Look for a motion to approve those minutes. Motion to approve the 13, 2023 minutes fiscal year 24 priority workshop. Thank you. Second, please. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state so by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Discussion agenda. We have our fiscal year 24 budget discussion. John, would you please start us off? Sure. Good evening. Um, we had a good year this year. Uh, values increased by 16%. Um, if you all have your budget sheet, I actually laid a new one out for you. Uh, just before the meeting, it actually has colors on it because I know it's uh, I know it can be a little hard to follow. It's extremely detailed, so um, everybody can see everything, and there's no hiding anything. Um, values went up, like I said, sixteen percent. The proposed uh, ad valorem from the county will be a little over three million, about three point five from the city. We have a little bit of interest earnings and donations. Um, we also tapped into fund balance, some of it for designated obligations and some of it just to cover some of the things and the priorities that the board wanted us to follow next year. So what I have uh, from our, our priority meeting is our number one and number three priority were uh, capital improvements in housing, uh, which is, denoted in uh, light purple under projects and grants. Number two was commercial grants, which is in orange, which is 355. Um, number four was marketing, which is the first one up under operating. And that's $100,000 up from $80,000. And then for number five, we had uh, a couple of different things. Uh, we had uh, property acquisition, we had um uh, circuit and we also had um what i what i put under neighborhood housing programs which is the program that uh commissioner morgan laid out for us whereby we would go and do uh residential rehab on multifamily properties in exchange for um in exchange for them keeping the rent slow so i really need some help on these these last particular ones uh that are colored um, 
for the local transportation, I budgeted 150. However, I think uh, after speaking to them and with the city and their plans, I think we need at least $200,000 there. Land acquisition, I have at 200, which quite frankly is not going to buy anything. <laughs> and then uh, the neighborhood housing programs, if that's something the board really wants to do, then we should probably take the money out of land acquisition and put it into that as well as the circuit. Um, there are, excuse me, there are um, a number of, of projects that we have going on that have not uh, come to fruition. So therefore we have not paid anything out yet. Um, those are all under programs. And um, example for uh, professional services, we have 145 down from 285. That 145 would go towards some kind of professional that we may need, whether it be an engineer, an architect, et cetera. Economic development is at 1.1. That includes uh, $600,000 for the Gulf Stream, which is already in an agreement, and then a new $500,000 for us to spend on economic development next year. Housing, this is not the affordable housing. This is housing that we've already approved. So this includes um, some grants for the Perch, Deco Green, Village Flats, and 821, which is the 55 and older LIHTC project. Mm -hmm. The commercial grant program is at three fifty-five. Three uh, $55,000 of that is carried over from last year that we haven't paid out yet. And then there's a new $300,000. Um, if there is extra money, uh, if we decide not to do property acquisitions, I would suggest putting more money there uh, with the thought that perhaps at our next meeting, we discuss raising the maximum of the grant programs from $35,000 to $50,000. Uh, we found that compared to other cities, our grant programs are actually uh, pretty low. Tax increment rebate, obviously that's the mid and the bohemian at 760. Uh, just for everybody's edification, they also they also are paying $1.2 in taxes. So that's just a portion of that. Um, beautification banners and decorations, 65. Neighborhood housing programs, 50. Uh, this could possibly be where we put more money in to fund helping um, people who own multifamily in order in exchange for, we'll rehab their place in exchange for um, keeping the rents low. Mm -hmm. uh, downtown programs, we have 25. Um, that's a mix of all kinds of things that we would like to do in the downtown after uh, Lake and Lucerne is finished. It also it includes the planters. It includes the signs in the planters. It includes bicycle racks, trash cans, benches, which need replacement. And then finally, under programs, we have local transportation for 150. Uh, like I said, my uh, my suggestion would be to raise that to at least 200,000 to cover the circuit if it's something that this board and the city commission would like to do. Then under that, we have projects and grants, which is a transfer, uh, transfer to capital project fund. So 1.3 million of that is for affordable housing and to meet our match, just in case we get community project funding next year. And then we have 630 of it going to the infrastructure to redo uh, sidewalks, crosswalks, and the streets. Um, this would be B through H between Lake and Lucerne, and we would be transferring this money to the city for them to do the improvements in coordination with FDOT, who is also redoing Lake and Lucerne and also the traffic circle. Um, really nothing too exciting under buildings and acquisitions. Um, obviously, demos and dispositions came down considerably. Our property management went up just because the amount of properties that we own uh, and we have to take care of before we transfer them to our partners. Um, land acquisition, like I said before, is $200,000, which really isn't enough to do anything. Um, so the suggestion uh, from staff is to move it to uh, commercial grant programs, local transportation, or a housing program. Uh, Lula program stays flat, as does debt service, uh, bringing our total budget to $7.5 million. Does anybody have any questions so far? So um, this is an opportunity to make comments on this. There'll be a second visit of this at our next meeting. Um, so if, we, if you could please wait to be recognized. If you have a comment, uh, please just let me know. I'll be glad to call on you. You can ask clarification or ask questions. 
Does anybody want to start off? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if this is the right time to talk about uh, the uh, allocation of of the the grant of the uh, land acquisition to other uh, categories, but I'm I'm a, a real proponent for the uh, transportation circuit uh, program. Uh, so I just want to throw my hat into the ring for that uh, in advance of any discussion we might have uh, for for that. Um, that's it. Joe, on on that, <clears throat> and for clarification purposes, we would only be able to support a percentage of that and, and focused solely on our district. Right. So I know we were having discussions about route versus door-to-door -door service. Um, I did get a cost for the route because I thought that's what we were going to do. So that would be 70-30 with us picking up 70% and the city picking up 30%. However, the city has not really gotten into discussions on what exactly they would do. I think they've talked a little bit about doing more of a door-to-door -door service than something we would do. Uh, and the reason for us, you know, kind of treading lightly on that is everything has to stay within the district and there's not going to be a driver, probably not people in the in the community either who kind of know where this area is yeah. and where it isn't. Um, so that still needs to be kind of ironed out with the city. Uh, but for for safety purposes, as far as, you know, making it having enough in our budget to make it work, I would suggest at least two hundred thousand dollars there. Just for clarification for everybody, we have to spend our resources within our district. So if these vehicles leave our district to go, say, to a neighborhood, that's no longer within our district. So that's why there has to be a shared expense. And it's a little hard to quantify if you have a route that also includes somebody calling you from, say, my house on Lakeside, you know, so. But I'm sure we can figure out a way to do it. Well, we could do, you know, like, uh, I think that he... I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think Betty was talking about maybe we have one that's fixed route and then another one that's not fixed route, but then the city would have to pay 30% of ours and then they'd have to pay whatever percentage of that if we could come up with a percentage. Yeah, yeah. Dave, David will steer us right on here. Keep <laughs> us out of trouble. Brandon, I'm okay. just, yeah, just, um, I know that uh, in, and the way it works in Palm Beach and West Palm Beach, they do have, uh, a, a really tight map. They don't go out. They don't take uh, calls from them, and they don't go outside of their route. So you can have a really funky pres prescribed route too. Uh, you know, it's not like a free for all that you like Uber. You can call. You you have an app, and then it just it it actually is a map that shows you where you can go. So it's uh, it's it's pretty simple that way. But yeah, you're right. It might be um, limited in that way. You know, a little bit. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm sure we'll get into the weeds on that. I just wanted to clarify the the shared expense. And just so everybody knows, I've actually asked Circuit to come next month to our meetings so we can kind of discuss all the little details before we Great. put any pen to paper. All right. Great. Thank you. Anybody else um, <clears throat> for any items on this budget for clarification or discussion? Yep. Okay. Um, I would also back um, totally eliminating the land acquisition uh, money and distributing it amongst the other line, line items that might need some more funding, uh, like uh, my colleague, Ms. Ann Fairfax. I'm also um, looking forward to a successful local transportation program and uh, greatly appreciate the attention to the neighborhood and housing programs, which I think we could even more, we had some more money allocated to that. Okay, thank you. No? Okay, thank you. Bob. No, yeah, this is kind of a first reading, so good point. Anybody else? Have... All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, and I can. Can I ask a question? Can I get a little bit uh, more direction on where the board would like to go as far as neighborhood housing programs? Because if we're going to take on a multifamily rehab, that can be rather expensive. So I just want to make sure that I've divided up this money to make sure that we've hit all the priorities from the board first. So um, I think we're, I think we're 
we're trying to clarify what that looks like. Right. So um, there was like four number fives in our priority list, uh, and that included the transit, property acquisition, and also uh, the program that Daniel had laid out for us, which was us um, subsidizing uh, residential multifamily places in exchange for them offering affordable rents. So those are kind of like the three that ranked number five, but I, 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 you know, I took the little money we had left and kind of put it in all three, but you know, too little spread out doesn't do anything. So I just kind of need some guidance on where he would like to see if we take the money out of property acquisition, where would you like to see it go? So I'd make the, the, the comment on the, the housing program, you know, my, my question to David would be, is there any legal means in which we can encumber somebody, a private owner that has a rental property to restrict their rent after receiving a grant? And how would we police that with limited resources? Uh, David Tulsa, CRA attorney. Um, I mean, it's, it'd be really difficult to uh, provide for the necessary income restrictions on the property if you're just giving out or not giving the granting funds, let's say, to a property owner, it's more um, more frequent or more, uh, uh, what I want to say, it's easier to operate if it's a piece of property, uh, like with the NSP program, where we were able to assist with, a, you know, first time home buyer down payment assistance, where we provided them with a certain portion of their uh, closing costs or second mortgage. Uh, and then we were able to place that restriction on the property because we're directly funding the acquisition. Um, I think it's a little different when we're just providing some type of, um, you know, grant for to offset a monthly rental expense where we don't have any uh, ownership interest in the property. Originally, we don't have the federal funds necessarily that uh, required us to tie uh, the second mortgage to future income restrictions. Um, I mean, we can look at it um, and see, but it, I think it'd be a lot more difficult to do it that way. And then yeah. I also don't know if it's consistent with our plan. If we, you know, I had need to check the plan with respect to you know, rental assistance programs, whether from the landlord side, from the tenant side. In, in, a, in addition, and, and I own... Full disclosure, not in the city, but I own a ton of residential property. If I'm fixing it up, I'm going to charge more rent. So we're asking them to do the opposite. And and then trying to tax our limited staff to keep people in line uh, after the fact. So if, if we're looking more at um, property improvement where we're providing them funds, I mean, we could we can look at that, but you know, I don't know from a business perspective if a landlord is going to want to agree to that. Um, right. They're getting money to reduce their uh, construction expenses or their property improvement expenses, but over the long term, what are they going to lose as far as potential rental income? In, I mean, there may addition, there may be philanthropic landlords out there, but uh, not familiar with them. Yeah. Uh, in a, in addition, I'm fundamentally opposed to spending tax dollars. Uh, to subsidize someone's business enterprise. I mean, if you buy a rental property, you're in business. I don't care how you spend it. To spend the tax dollars uh, to help you in your business venture, I don't think is a fair expense to the taxpayer. And if we can't figure out a, a way to hold them accountable, if we do make a grant program in terms of keeping the rent low, I just don't, I can't support that. That's my opinion. And I'll just say one more thing. Historically, what CRAs have done is they provide uh, like a, a property improvement program where we'll give them ten, fifteen thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars to help them improve their property, and then they've got to maintain it. Uh, if they don't, then in theory we should be able to get our funds back at some point in time. But I'm not familiar with a program that ties the improvement payment from the CRA to uh, a a certain rent or percentage of income, that kind of rental limitation. Thanks. Thank you, David. I have reservations as far as... I'm sorry. I have reservations as to whether or not this would be the direction that the CRA should go in because we have no leverage, number one, that he's going to do what we say. 
We have no staff to monitor this. We are at the goodwill of the landlord that we've already given the money to. And if we had to ask for the money back, that's going to be a long legal process. So is that a direction where we want to go in when we can assist people with affordable housing in other ways? You know, if, if I had a business, when I undertake that uh, venture, I'm going to decide how much money I'm going to invest, what my profit is going to be. And I'm certainly not going to come back to the CRA to say, how much rent should I charge? And so I think that this is going to be fraught with so many issues that it's not something that we should get involved in. I know that we want to help people who are renters, but I think we should try and get them on the road to home ownership rather than try and deal with their landlord to try and lower their rent at a future time. But hopefully, if you can come up with something that we could work it out, I'd certainly be willing to listen to it. But my first thought is, is this a direction that the CRA wants to go in? Um, I hear uh, the reservations that the, you guys have, and I think Joan also voiced these uh, concerns too. And like she said at the workshop, no other CRA has done something like this. Uh, it's it would the way I see it is really as a, a pilot program. You know I mean, fifty thousand dollars isn't a lot to play with. First of all, um, I think that um, if we're serious about addressing blight in our city, the rentals have to be in the mix. Um, a lot of people who live in Lakewood Beach cannot be on the pathway to home ownership, and that's just an unfortunate fact that that's outside of our hands. But um, I think with Joan uh, and the staff, they could come up with something. You know, I'm looking at this home maintenance quick look manual, this tenant checklist, and I already see that, um, you know, some brainstorming is going on as to how we could um, you know, address the, the the difficulties that both landlords and tenants are facing in our city. Um, you know, I for my personal work, I um, I deal with landlords and trying to get rentals for my clients. And I've seen opportunities. I've discussed with them opportunities about how uh, a landlord would be intrigued into uh, remodeling their home or or doing certain important fixes and, and agreeing to uh, rent out to a tenant for. Uh, a year, two years at a certain rate that uh, they feel is comfortable uh, because of the money that they receive to put into the apartment. You know, after two years, it's very possible that they could choose to, uh, you know, rent it out at the at the higher rate. Um, but that's that's something that comes along with uh, almost any project that we we get involved in. Um, I'd be really excited to see what uh, the CRA staff can do with um, this housing program. Thank you. Any other? Yes. Uh, I, would, I would personally like to see that 50,000 go towards the circuit rather than stay in that program. Um, it looks like there was, you mentioned that there's 150,000 on the budget now and you needed 200,000 to cover it. So I have reservations about that program as well and think it would fit well, the circuit. Anyone else have no comments? Uh, yes, Commission. I didn't know if you were going to do public comment or not, so thank you. We weren't, but thank you. Sorry, um, Sarah Maliga, 408 South E. So, as one of the first time home buyers who came through the NSP2 program and the CRA, um, I have major reservations on this. Where's the return on the investment? Um, Cash collected by unscrupulous landlords happens every single day in this community. I watch the Mercedes Benz pull up. I watch them collect cash, put it in their pocket. They have the funds, majority of them, to reimburse and put into the business, right? The business is a tax write-off. At the end of the day, when you invest in your business, you put that on your taxes and you write that off from your income. There are plenty of benefits to investing into your own property besides community pride. I personally think that we're, the CRA is here for community redevelopment. That's what CRA stands for, not for developing wealthier to make them wealthy. Um, I, I would like you guys to consider, instead of doing something like that, the city is looking at putting $300,000 on one of our wish lists right now. We're looking at doing semi-annual power washing of downtown, the alleys, the streets, and the sidewalks. And I was 
I put myself in the ring and said I would ask the CRA board to match that with us so we could do it quarterly instead of semi-annually. We want to really improve the vibe and the morale of the downtown, and we want to show pride in community redevelopment. We have to start with the simplest things, right? And I am all for home ownership. You could also use this money to buy down more units. You know, we have tons of projects coming on right now. Buy down the units. You have a tangible there. You have a track record. You have something to fall back on. So please reconsider this this appropriation. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, there, there was a <clears throat> there was a time where we took full responsibility for the downtown cleaning. There was. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, we remember. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any other comments? No, do you have I'm muddy sorry. clear? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I I think I got it. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, let's move on to item B: Executive Director's Annual Review. Um, David. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so pursuant to the uh, appointment agreement with the Executive Director. Uh, the, there needs to be a review conducted by the board prior to August 1st. Um, so there's no specific requirement of filling out forms or um, you know any kind of process. So if it's however the board wants to conduct that review and being that we're in July, uh, it was placed on your agenda for this meeting. Uh, and then uh, in conjunction with that um, is uh, the, the contract does provide for at least a 3% raise under the, um, the, the CPI. Um, so at following the review, there should be some type of motion to authorize uh, either, you know, whatever the, the salary adjustment would be. Thank you. It's 3% or whatever the CPI is. And the CPI is... What? Anyway, so... I, the agreement says that the board should authorize. So whatever form the, of action the board wants to take tonight would be appropriate. Can you remind all of us, the, is the language whichever is greater? Generally, that's... It's <laughs> Um, as, uh, yeah, okay. Following the annual performance evaluation, the employer may award a salary adjustment of no less than 3% or the increase in the most recent 12 month CPI for the Miami Florida Metropolitan Statistical Area, whichever is greater. In Thank addition, you. you have discretion to provide for additional salary increase based upon the evaluation of the employee's performance. Thanks, David. You're welcome. So, uh, having uh, been involved in, in several of these now over the, the years, and this being my second tour of duty, uh, I've <clears throat> been a part of many votes on this guys that I'm proud of, but none more so than making the motion to hire John. And that I feel strongly about that, and I'll support her even when I'm not in this chair or sitting up here. Um, and she's done an amazing job and she cares very much for a city that she doesn't even live in, <laughs> but she comes here every day and she does her job and she does a great job and she has a great team and she runs that team well with very a limited amount of resources. And uh, I think she's terrific and I have nothing, I don't even have any constructive criticism. Okay. So uh, that's my comment. Anyone else? I'll second that. I've been serving on this board for a while, and I think Joan and her staff do a phenomenal job because of the projects that we have and the projects we've undertaken. And you can see it moving around the city, the improvements in the projects that have been undertaken. I I will put a comment in. I, uh, I appreciate the fact that Joan will call me and uh, ask for my advice and bring me in on, on key issues uh, to to really pull the board in for um, what, what we're really here for, which is to offer our perspective and expertise. Um, and that's, uh, that's something that's important to me that if I, I feel like I'm just a rubber stamp here, it's, uh, it, it's really not 
not worth it to put the time in. So Joan does in all of her myriad of duties and having to put budgets together and all of this, she still finds the time to have a, 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 a bigger picture uh, of the board. And, and I hope she does the same to everyone else to uh, recognize individual, um, uh, you know, the, things that that matter to us and to bring us in. So I appreciate that. Thanks, Joe. It's been great getting to know you this year. So look forward to keep going. Thank you. Thomas? I will just reinforce what everybody said and second that emotion. Um, Jim, really thanks for everything you're doing and much like Anne, you know, I've gotten to know you a lot better and I've worked with you in a number of things now and uh, really uh, respect and admire you and all the hard work that you and really small staff put into making things happen. So, yeah, thanks for everything and just keep, keep up the good work and I'm glad to be part of this. One of the things that I was impressed about when Joan was talking about the budget, she says the 15% increase. If we can get a 15% increase on our investment, we're making good money. So I think that Joan speaks to that 15%. And she has a phenomenal staff. Thank you guys for what you do. But it, it's very hard to do what Joan does. And I think that she not only, she deserves all that we can give her. Because every time that I've had a question, I just have to pick up the phone and call her. And if she's not available, she calls me right back. She actually listens. And we even when we don't agree, she listens. And she tells me up front, you know, why she doesn't agree. And we can work it out. And I think that's the best kind of director that you can have is someone that's going to listen to what you have to say, give their honest opinion, and certainly work with you to work out a solution. So I certainly think that she's worth everything that we pay her and more. And yes, I would agree to give her more than the CPI is recommending. Thank you. So just to be clear, uh, not that it wasn't understood, but the our obligation under the contract is 3% mm -hmm. or CPA, CPI, whatever is greater. CPI is going to be greater than 3%. I don't have to even look it up. That is a baseline for us. That basically means that we've kept up with the area inflation, for lack of a better way. If we feel that Joan deserves more, then that is certainly within our curve. So I would support higher than the CPI because CPI is basically just keeping them up with what's going on in this crazy environment. It doesn't reward them for the extra effort. We obviously have more money to work with in our budget. More money means more work. If for nothing else, that's a reason and justification in my mind for going more. So this is a discussion item. Um, I don't know, we can't really, how does that work, David? Well, if you want, she'll get what's under the contract. If you want to give her more than that, then you would make a motion to provide for that additional amount. Can we? Can the, we... C, the, the CPI over the last 12 months is 9%. Okay, so under her contract, she'd be entitled to that 9% okay. without any action. Uh, if you want to provide something above that, then that would be what would be in your motion. Okay. Can we take action on a discussion item? It's on the discussion agenda. We'd have to move. We'd have to have a motion to move it. If you want to, if you want to move it to the action agenda, uh, you know, majority board want to do that. That's fine. It's on the agenda, so it's been noticed. Right. Is there a motion to uh, a slight revision of the agenda to move the discussion item B to action agenda item A, and then subsequently reorder A, B, and C and D that's on the present action agenda? Sure, I'll make a motion to move uh, executive director's annual review, which is B, on the discussion agenda to uh, Roman numeral eight on, and put it on, include it on the action agenda. Thanks, Donna. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please state so by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion carries unanimous. Uh, oh, there, we have a... So that's uh, six to one, so that item is now uh, a A one, mm -hmm. and then the other items would be A two B C. 
Okay, so we'll move on to our action agenda and we'll start with that item, which is now item A1, <laughs> uh, Executive Director of Annual Review. This has been moved to the action agenda item so that we can take action specifically, well, not limited to, but specifically on the, the uh, regards to the increase uh, in the salary. So does anybody have a motion that we can second and then have further discussion if necessary? I feel like I'm starting the bidding. Yeah. Um, I would make a motion to um, CPI plus in the starting. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. There'll be discussion on this, and then do we have a we have a discussion? What, yeah. We will yeah. right now, and then we will go to public because now it's an action item. We have to go to public. So uh, any discussion on uh, this would be a 12% uh, increase. What's the, uh, do we have a dollars and cents on that? <laughs> we, we, we don't want to give away the farm here. So, so. Yeah. <laughs> it got kind of nice to you. We do. It's it's in the um, the second amendment to the uh, executive director's employment agreement, which is in your backup, mm -hmm. um, and it's there. It's one ninety nine nine eighty five point six. So, calculate twelve percent of that one ninety nine twenty one thousand. Like two. Two ten or something like that. So, so, so at so what might say at the contracted rate. So if we just did the nine percent. The salary increase is seventeen thousand nine hundred ninety eight dollars. Okay. Um, at twelve percent, it's about twenty three thousand dollars. So that the twenty three thousand would bring her salary up to about two twenty five. Oh. Okay, and without the extra three percent, it would be at about uh, two nineteen. Two eighteen. So okay. okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, the only. <clears throat> I can I can justify my figures. I figure the nine percent is sort of the floor of where we have to go contractually. And in saying this, I'd like to recognize how very uncomfortable it must be to discuss company <laughs> in the forum. Um, so I take the nine percent. That's that's the floor. That's where we have to go. I'd like to recognize Jones' work by going above the CPI. So that's kind of how I came to the three percent. I follow that same okay. logic. I I have uh, I I own a company and I have hundred employees and we're dealing with this. You know, it sounds like a big number, and it is a big number. But I'm facing this all the time with my, in my own company. It's this is kind of what what's going on in the world. So uh, you have to keep up to to keep good people. You have to keep up to reward people for doing hard work and good work. Reward, people. and I feel good about being able to do that. We're in a position to be able to do it uh, with the increase in in TIF, and so I support the motion. I think this is in line with other executive positions. Um, you know, South Florida is is historically been sort of on the lower end of the pay scale. I think we're moving out of that uh, historically, uh, you know, bargained uh, area. And even though it is Lake Worth, we're not, you know, we don't we don't have a, a bunch of cash lying around. I think that Joan's work is helping so much and her consistency and her dedication and her staff and her, her leadership that has brought uh, Lake Worth, you know, uh, it is keeping pace with our um, development. And I, I've never seen her falter. So I, I think uh, you're right. I mean, it's it's not, it sounds like a big number, but by the time taxes are taken out and you're working that hard, it's, it's a, it's a, um, I think it's consistent with other executive positions. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any other further discussion before we go to public? Any public comment on both? Oh. 
Sarah, Sarah, Sarah was faster. <laughs> I, I have to run to the Rolo neighborhood meeting. Again, I apologize. I'm Sarah Maliga, 408 Southeast. Thank you all for recognizing the hard work that Joan and her staff put in. Um, it was said earlier, well, I'd like to see what the CRA staff can come up with. You're looking at them. This is it. This is this is the team of amazing minions that run this city, along with our city staff. And whenever we can show gratitude like you guys have tonight, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. Thanks, Sarah. Sorry, well, thank you. That's we're both in the Motor City, right? <laughs> <laughs> we just found out we're both in Detroit. Right. Um, uh, my name is Bo Allen. I live at 208 South Lake Side Drive. Um, I've been a, a permanent resident for 40 years. <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, this was the newlywed and the nearly dead. That's what it was. It was disgusting. It was run down. Um, the difference that Joan has made. Uh, the land acquisitions, the Midside and Art Center, the Palm Beach Cultural Council coming to town, um, the mid, um, the Bohemian, uh, the Publix. I don't know. Give me the list. So I think she should be rewarded. And I loved her logic. I'm not sure going, but thanks, Becky Lee, for that. Um, I, I hope you guys give her the, um, the latitude to continue to, to bring new projects to this board. And I hope that you continue to grow the town and 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 um, work on the downtown. I like the idea of pressure washing the streets. You know, you got like uh, my family owned beef eaters, uh, steak pit on Fort on uh, Forest Hills, just west of Congress. And in 1979, my uncle said, "Make sure the front windows are clean every single day. You know, you got to clean the windows, and you got to keep it um, the entrance not so." Uh, I just, uh, I really think Joan has done a great job. I really, really do. And I think the citizens are really proud of this board, and the citizens are proud of what you guys have done. And I hope you guys keep it up. Thanks, Bill. You got it, man. Any other public? Mayor. Sorry. Good evening, 207 South L Street. I rarely do we get the opportunity in public to acknowledge with somebody's the work that they have done and what they have done and with the board and amazing staff to support her. So I'm, I, I just want to take that opportunity. Thank you. When I was elected a couple of years ago, we had some long, deep, hard talks about different approaches to what was happening in the city. Clearly, and that was an issue. And we've been able to form a relationship and, and build on that relationship with you and with the commission. So I just want to say, you know, treat her well. Thank you. I've got to go off to now to a neighborhood association in a minute. Thanks, Mary. What? Oh, Emily. Okay, let's do public first, and then sure. thank you. Emily. Yep. Oh, thank you. Yep. Uh, Tom Ostrell, twenty one eleven Notre Dame Drive. Only been a resident six years in Lake Worth, but I will tell you that this board has done a tremendous amount of work. And, and as I understand it, Joan, you're a major contributor to that. So I want to thank everybody for everything that has been done um, for the city. Um, the city is, uh, I think, the heart of, heart of this entire city. Downtown, I should say, is the heart of it. And the improvements that are being made are absolutely necessary. I think keeping the city clean is very important. And uh, so, I, I, I showed up, so I thought I'd get up here and say thank, thank you to everybody. Thanks, John. Thanks for coming forward. Everett? I know the hair is bright. I'm an artist. Um, I'm Deborah Robert. I live at 127 South K Street. I have my bungalow there, historic bungalow for about seven years, my husband and I. And I wrote this in, by the way. So I'm here to just state my appreciation for the whole CRA and for Joan Olivia, um, who with her small staff has enriched the lives and shored up stability and promise for so many people in our city. I feel like she and her team and you all on the board have been unflagging in the pursuit of forging vital relationships in order to lock in funding to improve infrastructure, workforce and affordable housing, business opportunities, and help Lake Worth Beach become the diverse cultural mecca I believe it's destined to be. It's really incredible that the district's values increased as much as it has in the past 10 to 12 years. And it's exciting to live in the city now. It really is. Because not only can you see the improvements, which are all over, big and small in our city, you can feel the improvements. There's a tangible pulse of broadening opportunity, and it's for everyone. From a newly disabled person's perspective, I couldn't have imagined a better place to reorient myself having gone back to my roots as an artist. So this is my small focus for today. 
Um, from the county's cultural council headquarters finds home here to the Benzitan Center, Hatch, Artist Loss, Mural, Street Pang Festivals, and the like. We're fast becoming the model of diversity and success in the arts as we're destined, we're destined to be. This is no small feat for a poor city that may many have been that have shunned. None of this would have happened if not for Joan's stewardship and her crew and the CRA board for all these years. So thank you. Because arts speaks all languages and crosses every culture, every demographic. And Joan and the CRA were instrumental in ensuring that arts would be accessible to all. For example, the Midsighton Center, which I am a PR on the PR board for. It sits along the west side of the tracks and was hardly dilapidated historic depot with gang tags sprayed all over it. Now it's the largest glass art center in the state where artists have to come from all over the world. We're getting more and more of them every year. They they want to practice, demonstrate, and collaborate. And some are even speaking of moving here to get really into it. So if you haven't visited, please do in the upcoming season. And yes, this does boost our reputation as a national and growing international artist mecca, and in a big way. But the real growing success of Benzitan is found in what it provides to the community being an NFP. Every year, about 900 underserved children from our community go to summer classes and programs there. And it's multilingual. It's for all ages, and it's absolutely free of charge. And we're also proud members of the Compass Business Alliance, committed to making the arts open and accessible to everyone. Stay tuned, because we're just getting started as a center. It's going to be incredible. So thank you, everyone, for that. Hatch 1121 has become a home away from home for so many. It's a safe, diverse space where we can share expressions, enjoy each other's creativity, and anyone may learn life skills about business and home ownership, learn about our rich cultures citywide. Now even more live workspaces are arriving with neighborhood renaissance, an absolute dream for artists that are just, just need a chance to, to thrive. So what I mentioned here today is just a spoke in a very large wheel, and I know that. But what I see now is how, over time, all these initiatives, big and small, undertaken by the CRA, because they all become to inter they begin to interconnect. Then they become inseparable from one another, and they become a binding force. And that's what I believe the CRA does. These are the underpinnings needed to ensure the promise of a stable, thriving economy in a tight-knit community. And there's a tremendous amount of vision and wisdom that you're all putting out. And, and with Joan Olivia's hard work, in all of this to recognize the potential and see the future and keep balancing all of it as it comes together. That's no easy job. And as Anne Fersick just said, um, that raise, it, it seems solid. It seems fair. Let's keep this momentum, everyone. Thank you, Joan Olivia, for your service. I wish for it to continue and continue and continue. And thank you, CRA staff. And thank you, CRA board. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Move on, I want to follow with that. I'm not going to stay here. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Any other public comment? Aaron. Aaron Allen, 208 South Lakeside Drive. I too have been here for 40 long years. And um, I remember when Joan came on board with the CRA, and there's just been a tremendous difference in the city, the way it feels. It feels like it's living and it's breathing and there's new projects. And there's she's created new tax base for the city. You know, we've never had enough money to do anything in the city. The answer's always been, we don't have the funding. We don't have the money. We don't have the funding. Well, she's worked really hard to bring tax dollars to the city to create projects that we can all be proud of as a city. And I appreciate her affordable housing that she's in, the workforce housing that she's initiated in the city, sorely needed. Um, and I just want to thank her. I know it's really a thankless job, and there's a there's a very delicate balance between, you know, thoughtful progress and development and unfettered development. And I think that Joan has, um, she's found that perfect balance, and I'm proud to say that she's a CRA director, and I hope she's here for the next seven years until it sunsets in 2031. Thank you, John. Thanks, Aaron. Anybody else? So, Emily, if if I could, uh, two of the people that wrote in came up. So, if if I may ask, if we can not read your comments as well into the record, okay? And then, so the only one I show is is the one. So, thank you. Good evening, Chair, CRA Commissioners, and staff. I am Wes Blackman, 241 Columbia Drive. Besides being a 30-plus year resident of the city of Lake Worth Beach, I happen to be a certified urban planner with the planning 
consultancy based here. It is important that people know what an absolute gem of a professional we have with Joan Oliva as a long-term director of the CRA. This comes from someone who sat in your position when the CRA board voted to apply for 23 million of NSP2 monies. The resulting grant award to the CRA enabled families to attain affordable homes, both existing and new construction. That was about 15 years ago, and we are just now using up the final funds and reinvestment from that program. My point here is that applying for and administering that program would be a career for most professionals in the field of redevelopment. Joan Oliva would be the first to admit that it wasn't all her and that it really was the consortium partners that made the program the success it turned out to be. She is way too humble to publicly acknowledge that she was the glue which held the program together. Given that my time is limited tonight, you need to remember that the CRA's successes translate directly and indirectly into success for the city of Lake Worth Beach as a whole and the life of its residents. You have in Joan Oliva, the consummate professional who is here to make sure that she enacts and administers programs based on your direction as board members. I can assure you that she is more than capable of doing just that. The scope and breadth of the CRA's many successful programs demonstrate just that. All come back to the key purpose of the CRA's formation, that being the elimination of slum and blight. Thank you for your time and attention tonight, and I wish you all a productive meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Uh, did you read the name of the author into the record? Wes Blackman. Okay, thank you. Columbia Drive. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, you probably did, and I missed it. Okay, um, so we have a motion. We have a second. We've heard board comments. We've heard public comments. Thank you for all of those. I'd like to go ahead and uh, if they're all in favor, please state so by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. So, David, are we now on to A or B? A2. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I thought that we previously would like bump them. I just, that's you're messing with me. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. Uh, if you want to move A to B and B to C and C to D, you can do that too. So, well, I'm not the one that has to do the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just said A1 and A2, and then that way you only have to change one item. Got it. Okay. So we are on to either way, on to CRA commercial grants, uh, 1114 North Dixie Highway, review and determine funding. Is that you, John? <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Christopher Bruce, Lake or CRA. And before you is our last. Commercial enhancement grant request for fiscal year 2023. Uh, we stopped accepting grant applications on June 1st. Um, it's going to reopen again, a little maybe revised. The application application process might be a little revised come October 1st. So um, you may have uh, on the October board meeting a lot of grant applications to review. Um, so this is the last one for this year. This is from Mr. Scott Berman, who recently purchased the building at 1114 North Dixie Highway, received this grant application in May of this year for full funding for $70,000. That's $35,000 from the a, a commercial facade grant and $35,000 matching from the interior grant program to renovate this building that's been sitting empty. It's a 83-year-old uh, building that's been sitting empty for quite some time. I think the last use of it has been was the Elks Club Lodge many years ago. It's not just the building, it's also the surrounding or adjacent parking lot, which stretches from Dixie Highway all the way back to North J Street as well that he purchased and uh, it's gonna have to redevelop. Pictures are provided in your packet. Um, we tried putting them up on the screen, but it didn't work out. So if you just review some of those pictures of what the building currently looks like, it's really just a shell of a building. He will be moving in his administrative staff from across the street. He owns all the properties across the street, um, which is uh, comprises mostly his window company, Florida Window and Door. Uh, so most of those administrative offices and uh, positions will be moving across the street to this building. He's also going to be using it for warehouse, but it's going to require a total build out of the building, um, total renovation of not only the building, but plus the parking lot as well. And uh, Mr. Berman is the property owner and business owner, uh, and he is here today. If you have any questions, you can ask me or Mr. Berman. So the request here is for $70,000 matching funds from the CRA uh, to his project at the completion of the project. 
Thanks, Chris. I uh, will take a motion and a second, then we'll have discussion, and um, we can speak to Mr. Berman if if, uh, if anybody has questions for him. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Unless you want to do that. Okay. Thanks, Donna. All right. So, uh, make a motion to approve and award funding to the redevelopment project at uh, 1114 North Dixie Highway. Um, not to exceed 35,000 in reimbursable matching funds from the commercial facade bank program and additional 35,000 not to exceed uh, 35,000 in reimbursable matching funds from the interior improvement grant program. So the total would be $70,000 in matching funds for this parcel of land and building. Thank you. Uh, and is there a second for that motion? Second. We have a motion and a second on to discussion. Anybody have any comments or questions for either Chris or Mr. Burrow? I actually do have one. Um, you know, I read the justification, I read the budget and looked at the photos and uh, I'm in favor, but one of the conditions for the, uh, the, the grants are uh, jobs to be added. So I wanted to know the current number of employees, full-time and part-time and the number of jobs that will be added. Thanks. Please go forward and state your name and address for the record. You want my home address or my business address? Where is it? I'll give you my business address. It's 1125 North Dixie Highway, uh, Lake Worth. Scott Berman. Thank you. Sorry. Um, in answer to your question, how many jobs? We employ, uh, Florida Wind Indoor employs 350 people. Our corporate office is here. With, there's probably about 125 people here. We anticipate adding about another 40 to 60 jobs in Lake Worth. Um, I think we've grown. We're the hundredth, with the 20th largest home improvement company in the country since we moved here. I think we've added 325 jobs in the company as a whole. So, I mean, um, from a personal perspective, uh, you know, going back to the CRA, I mean, I bought in Lake. I bought the original. Chuck's Appliance Store, I think it was called. Um, bought the property next door, the property next door to that, and now I'm buying the property across the street. I'm fully committed to Lake Worth. I've done business with the CRA. I think I, I think Chris would verify everything I say I'm going to do. I do. I'm not looking to take anything. Certainly looking to add jobs. Big proponent of the city. Commend you guys on the job you've done, and happy to be a part of it. So hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. If you could stay one second and see if anybody else has any uh, questions or comments, if you're finished. I'm done. Can I uh, just tell me a little bit about more about your business? We focus on um, hurricane impact protection throughout the state of Florida for residential use. So if you're a homeowner, you call us, we come out, we'll give you an estimate, we install the product, we pull the permit, We'll finance you if you need financing and effectively, hopefully you pay us and we're done and you're protected. Sorry, are you manufacturing? We are not manufacturing. We have a broker. For correct. We have private label products that we buy from multiple manufacturers out the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Yes. Are you one of the contractors that have been approved for the safe program through the state of Florida? We actually chose not to participate. We are approved, but the state has very limited resources to, pat, to, to give to that program. And so what's happening is there's a tremendous amount of uh, disinformation and there's other programs that are available uh, like Y Green, I don't know if you're familiar with it, which is a PACE program that's tied into the property taxes, which may go back to your property improvement prospect or idea. Is there's advantages there for for roofs and windows and uh, air conditionings um, for both commercial and residential, but it's a more, it's a beneficial pro program as there's no prepayment penalties and um, you can t you can take it out for 30 years at a very reasonable interest rate. So we're not, we're, so we're actually licensed to do it, but we don't do it or approved to do it. Okay. Any other so I remember when you purchased the, the properties that you're currently in, and they look a whole lot better Thank you. than they did prior. And Thank I you. think you made great use of the grant funds that you've awarded thus far. Thank you. Appreciate it. This project's a little bit bigger and problematic, but we'll get it done. I don't mind. Yeah, it's a mess. I'm going to add uh, landscaping as part of your improvements. Uh, 
I don't really know, but I mean, I'm happy to. It's not a problem. I don't know where we would put it is the problem because the, the, the front of the building is sort of really close to the street and there's existing landscaping, but we have no problem putting some landscaping if that's what you want. I, that's I, I no problem. It's, a, it's such a signifier of, of um, improvement and we need more shade. And I, I know the tree board, if they were here now, would be urging you to put trees in. I'm happy to talk to them. It's yeah. not a problem. And if you want to put a tababui in, tie in with the other tababui trees. A tababui tree? Yeah. I'm not familiar with it, but I'll look it up. I've seen them in the, uh, I think it's in the spring. They're, they're yellow. And we have so many of them on Dixie Highway that they create a, an image of, you know, it's, it's like a brand. We'll put it in. No problem. Great. Easy. Okay. How many do you want? As many as you can put. All right. We'll see what I can do. You'll at least get one. Okay. Thank you. All right. Not to contradict what you uh, just said, but uh, the tree board act actually is here. Um, oh, yeah. So uh, we would we would actually love you to put in the native yeah. plants and trees. So we could talk about it. Okay. Yeah. No, that uh, was always not native. Not native. Okay. So you you guys decide and we'll put it in. Is that fair? We'll, we'll talk. Okay. We'll talk about. It. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion from the board? We'll go to public. Any public on this? No? Oh? He just bought a piece of my property, so I know he's vested. <laughs> I was going to introduce myself, know, but you walked by and I... I feel an, an email, a couple emails back and forth, very easy gentleman to deal with, actually. <laughs> and um, <laughs> came to terms, and uh, I bought one of those cocoa walks that you guys helped do back in 03. Nice. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Um, do we have to do name and record, name and address for Bo since he made it? No, we just make that reference. <laughs> okay. Um, all in favor, please state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Thank you very much. Look Appreciate your work. The finished building. Aye. Of course, thank you. Yeah. Aye. All right. We are on to, we're going to call it B, purchase of county properties at 417 South B Street for affordable housing resolution 2023-04. No. Yes. Uh, we've been, uh, the CRA staff's been after this property for quite some time, 417 South D. It's actually a double lot. It's 50 foot wide. Um, it's been vacant for... As long as I can remember, not necessarily well taken care of by the county. Obviously, they have other uh, priorities. However, for us, uh, you know, it would provide a really nice home, um, especially for a larger family. Mm -hmm. So the the plan is once we get it from the county, and I have to go to the county next month for for them to uh, assign it to us once they get our resolution, and then we would turn around and we would uh, transfer the property to. Uh, the community land trust for them to build a house for a larger family that they have in their pipeline. This one feels easy. So let's see if we have a motion in a second. Make, I'll make a motion. So uh, make a motion that uh, the CRA board approves the deed with the county to purchase a 417 South A Street and um, authorize our chair or vice chair or executive director to sign all necessary documents. Thanks, Donna. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion from the board? Any public? All in favor, please state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Motion. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Emily, you got that? Got it. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> we have, uh, we are on to C, purchase of privately owned property on First Avenue South for affordable housing. So this is one uh, property we've been looking at for quite some time through Anderson and Carr. It's actually uh, two units. Uh, it used to be three, but the third one wasn't legal. <laughs> um, it does have it does have quite a bit of uh, code issues with it, which is why we got the owner to agree to come down pretty significantly in price. Um, the total price would now be three seventy three for two mm -hmm. units. Uh, the thought for this one is also to go to the community land trust, but they would actually do two rentals um, here in this one. And as you can see the in the picture, the back rental is actually really quite small. So it really provides some much needed affordable housing in the area. 
Um, so we're asking the board to please approve this. This will be our last um, purchase of property this year because we do we do not have any more money in order to buy more properties. We are um, anxiously waiting the $2 million from, uh, from the city that they committed towards the grant. So I'm um, asking the board to please let us go ahead and purchase 1306 for the Avenue South and authorize staff to take funding out of the capital uh, funds budget. Look for a motion and a second on this item. We'll make a motion to approve purchase 1306 for the Avenue South and actually purchase by putting funding in the capital funds budget. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Donna. Uh, discussion from the board? Public? All those in favor, please state so by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item D, agreements with housing partners for the provision of affordable housing. Sorry, I have so much paper. Yeah. <laughs> no. I should really just uh, bring the laptop. Uh, okay, um, so this is the time that we finally have enough properties, four, five, six, seven, eight properties that we are ready to transfer to our partners for use in affordable housing. Uh, Habitat for Humanity uh, would be getting three more properties. This is in addition to the four that uh, we've already given them. So that would be a total of seven uh, properties that are under development uh, this current year. Uh, the Community Land Trust um, would be getting two properties. They also already have four properties. One we've already dedicated, the other three they're still working on. And finally, community partners who uh, were gracious enough to take our multifamily for us, fix it up, and then rent it out uh, for affordable rents. So in this packet is purchase and sale agreements for between the CRA, Habitat for Humanity, or community partners, or community land trust for us to transfer those properties to them with the deed restriction for that they stay affordable housing. Um, and that's it. Thanks, John. Uh, is there any discussion on this item? Public? Okay. All those in favor, please state so by saying it. We need to make a motion. Yeah. We need to make oh, a motion. I'll make the We're motion. flying. We're flying. And, and, and just for the record, I just, when you make your motion, just identify, because um, in case a title company, it's like, no, if you could just read, you know, identify the conveyances to the three entities as reflected in the agenda memo, that will be helpful. Sounds like you. Three entities. Okay, Once. we'll do that. You don't have to go down <clears throat> list by list, but just identify the three entities. Okay, I'll make a motion that the board approve the purchase and sale agreements for the properties purchased by the CRA to allow them to be transferred to our nonprofit housing partners. And these are Habitat for Humanity, Community Land Trust, and Community Partners. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion from the board on this item? Public, all those in favor, please state so by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Thank you. We are talking to you, Joan. You have a lot. But I'll be quick. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, number one, Lake Ward Station. This is a, an affordable housing complex that is going up off, off of 10th and H Street. Uh, the reason that I'm bringing it to your attention is there's a total of 91 units and there were to be, I think about a little less than half that were going to be affordable. The developer who's also developing Deco Green, Ricardo Hernandez, reached out to me and he wants to, he is going to add uh, 39 more units. So out of the 91 units for low and moderate uh, um, income people, 78 of those um, will be for um, the low uh, income strata. So uh, that's an addition of another 78 affordable rental units for people wanting to live in the Lake Worth CRA or the city. I don't have it listed here, but I just wanted to congratulate staff. Um, they were as fantastic as they always are. And they brought in another grant for us uh, to use for uh, the Lake Worth Cultural Renaissance Foundation. Um, and the Renaissance Foundation is our foundation that supports uh, the events we have, uh, banners, kind of really all the fun stuff that we do. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a grant from the state. It's rather difficult to do. Um, so congratulations to them for that, especially Emily. Uh, 
1432 North Dixie. I just wanted to give you an update on this. We're working with a developer. Um, this is kind of exciting. It's kind of across from the mid or close to the mid. Um, a developer there is building four townhomes with ground floor retail. For um, the retail will be um, a total of eight. 1,850 square feet. There'll be uh, two bays there, and each townhome will have two bedrooms and two and a half baths. So hopefully the momentum on Dixie Highway has picked up and we'll see a lot of these smaller infill projects uh, come our way. Uh, the Fall Home Buyers Club, each of you should have a flyer uh, in front of you. We are doing, uh, I think it's, I thought it was the summer home buyers club. Anyway, um, we were doing home buyers club. <laughs> um, this is very important for people who are wanting to buy an affordable house within uh, Lake Worth. Um, you get your eight hours of mandatory training. Um, it also gives you a lot of really good tips on how to get ready to to afford a house. And I would uh, I would encourage anybody who thinks they can't afford uh, to purchase a house to to really give it some more thought and maybe come to the classes because I can tell you. I see the mortgages uh, for all the properties we did with NSP and they pay much less with mortgage and insurance than they do for a lot of new rentals around here. So it's a great opportunity. There's a lot of subsidy available, um, but if you know anybody who's thinking of buying a house, please tell them to, uh, to come to the classes. Uh, we have a landlord tenant workshop. Uh, it's gonna be at Hatch 1121. Um, it is going to be on August 10th, and it is going to be with the Florida uh, Rural Le Legal Services. Uh, I think something that's very needed in, in this city uh, to know for tenants to know their rights. Um, homeowner guide, we kind of uh, took off of Daniel Morgan's idea and thought, you know, we, we used to have a homeowner guide uh, when we did NSP. Um, but we found one that uh, was a mix of HUD and, and Habitat, and we kind of blended those together. Now, those are all for you up at the dais. We are also going to put it on the uh, CRA website. And then we also found um, some really good tips for tenants as well. So, so tenants could, could you know, learn their rights and know where, who to reach out to if they have any issues. So that is also another um, guide that we are going to put um, on the website. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, John. We are on to board member comments. Start with Hans. Um, I don't have anything prepared, but it's been uh, it's been nice to be able to recognize Joan and her contributions. And uh, I I think um, it's you know the staff is sort of invisible and working behind the scenes, and it's nice to see you here. And uh, you know we're we're all very appreciative of what you do and how you bring all this uh, data and information to us. So um, I just look forward to more, more and more. Um, somebody asked me, uh, do we ever have a, a, a month hiatus in the summer? I guess that's one of the critical questions of the chair and the board. Do we ever uh, feel like uh, maybe the summer, if we wanted to take a, a break on a month? if that is would be appealing or have any it, it would obviously depend on the on the agenda and um but joan would be able to guide us on that if things get quiet and uh it's hot and everybody's taking a break and unfortunately we or fortunately unfortunately we have budget which we have to get passed before the city does theirs so we do have to meet in august um but there's always the possibility it may be taking on September. We, uh, I sit on uh, other boards and, and generally we do take like a, a hiatus, but with ours, it's kind of, it's, it's hard to, because there's all of a sudden we have something, we, you know, time was sensitive and, you know, I think we, we did take one where we didn't really have anything on the agenda. We didn't get the backup fast enough. So we just took that month off. But, it happens, but it's not planned. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> just, just thought I'd bring it up. If, if the uh, if the budget is really light and it isn't time sensitive, I'd support that. But um, it's hard to plan. <laughs> uh, not much in the way of anything in particular. You say it's a really great meeting. Happy to, to uh, 
that we've had so much support for Joan and staff and really uh, happy about uh, having a lot of public comment and well, and I'm really even happier that there's no acrimony, no dissent. So it makes it a lot easier for all of us. And I think we got a lot of good work done today. So thank you. Good meeting. Emily, nice job on the additional grant. Congrats. You guys are always out looking for those things. And, um, we get quite a few of them. It's all on y'all's back to, to do that. So thank you very much. I, I did want to comment on the um, raft race for the 4th of July. Um, I was not in town for everything leading up. I was away for the week that was back for the 4th of July, actually. And it was such a sense of feeling. And I saw people I had in South Africa here. And it was just so relaxed. And I would strongly recommend that people attend next year, even if your community does not have a raft in the race. And I have to say, I was lost. So I was very happy about that. That's a personal thing. I was very, very happy about that. But um, they won the last several years, so I'm not happy that someone else had a chance to win. <laughs> but um, I and I think that the meeting with the FDOT is, is going to be important. Um, DOT makes a lot of decisions for our community, and a lot of times we don't even have people that really attend to speak for us, you know. And so. Um, I'll be done again this week, but um, I will strongly recommend that we start looking at the projects that FDLT has going forward, you know, particularly the um, 10th Avenue interchange. It is going to be just a mess, and that's the best I can say for it. You know, we're going to have kids trying to cross that intersection, and then they're saying that they're going to go like around a circle, kind of, you know, or, or they'll go through, and it, but they've already made that decision. And so at the time when they were making the decision, we were not at the table, you know, and, and we should have been in mass to say, this may not work for our kids, this may not be safe for our kids. But if someone would, if we could find out when they're going to have meetings and if someone from the city is, is going to show up, you know, maybe more people would show up and voice our opinion, you know, but they, they tend to always let us know after they made the decision and they say, well, we had an oh, we had a discussion, a meeting, and none of you came. So we already made the decision and we're just presenting it to you. And that's what they usually do before the commission. You know, and so the commission is blindsided as well because they weren't at the table either. So if, if we could start at least knowing about it so we can attend. Um you know, I would I have to speak about the uh, some of the comments that were made about the uh, housing program and the approach to this this helping out landlords thing. And you know, I'm a renter. I'm not particularly wealthy, or in the I'm not interested in in uh, making landlords richer, right? But the the simple issue is that we have a large population of people living in our city who do rent. Um, a lot of these people have no real protection when it comes to to rentals right there's uh, so many consumer protection agencies for so many different things but ask yourselves who's really protecting the homes here in lake Worth beach who's enforcing the rules the codes um you know this this program even when i asked joan about it uh was hesitant you know uh i thought of it more as a a pilot program um you know, to me, it's as simple as approaching a landlord or having a landlord sign up or promoting it some way you can make interaction with somebody. And uh, they would tell you, you know what, I need a couple thousand to make these type of repairs. And I would agree to rent to this person who preferably is already living there, right? Because the displacement is an issue too. Um, and the lease, the lease that we could both stomach, both the CRA, the tenant, and the landlord, um, to realize some of these small repairs that make a big difference um the thing is the the landlords they have they it's the seller's market right now. and with a large population of uh people here in lake worth who don't aren't aware of their rights uh, don't voice out their concerns about housing um you know i've i've worked with some individuals i've been in some of these homes and i'm so there's a, there's a lot that can be done how, how do you how do you tell somebody that you care or that um, let's say uh, a tenant uh, workshop or a home maintenance 
thing is, is important. You know, you got to entice somebody, even even the tenant, you know what I mean? Even if it's in their best interest sometimes, you know, I work in nonprofits and you you try to educate people, you try to connect them with resources and um, for their own good. But just like anybody else, they're distracted. They're, they're very busy with their day to day. You know, you have to entice them. And so what I what I think is a, a method of enticing a tenant and a landlord to both participate in this program is by supporting them financially, right? Because otherwise it would not happen. Um, I feel the approach of the CRA and a lot of CRAs um, is that of developing and developing, encroaching upon those neighborhoods that are dilapidated, that aren't as um, well uh, maintained. You know, it's 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 very obvious if you look if you look from Dixie West. You start walking the the corner of uh, Lake and Dixie. You start walking west. You see the approach of the CRA, and it's not that of incorporating what is already there or promoting what's already there. It's about building something that is already recognized and and and, and sought after by individuals who probably don't even live in those neighborhoods. The the mechanism, the apparatus, has already is, is made to support uh, the single family homeowner. I personally have nothing against single family home ownership. I would love to be a single family homeowner myself. But when is too much and when is not enough? You know, uh, when the landlord gets an increase in his taxes, county, city, he doesn't uh, take that hit. He puts it towards the rent. I mean, the tenant absorbs that rent. What are we doing? We've shown how much we care and how much we like to promote single family home ownership, which of course has uh, tons of benefits. But we didn't find ourselves in a housing crisis because of coincidence. It's because of a lack of, of recognizing what is happening in some neighborhoods, thinking outside the box, and really devoting time and resources to resolving that issue. And if we don't do it this way, I would I would love Joan. And Joan, congratulations on your on your raise. I really do think from, from all the comments and from what I've understood that you are a very uh, capable person. And I'm very happy that uh, I get to serve on the CRA with you uh, at the helm. Um, and I hope that you don't give up on this, this approach of, about fixing blight in the neighborhoods that really need it. Um, we're not gonna build our, a single family way out of this. Um, that's just not a reality until the, until unless unless what uh, we ultimately want, I believe, and I might be wrong, but I, I feel it's happened in the past and it's only going to happen in the future is that we keep with this same approach. The people who called Lake Worth home for all these decades uh, back when it was with some comments about how ugly and terrible it was, they're not going to be able to participate in our in our success if we don't start coming up with some ideas to um, to support them. And uh, that's all the comments I have. All right, thank you. Um, <clears throat> my only comment is, uh, Joan, I hope that you saw the support that you have, not just here, but from the community. And uh, thank you for all the, the, the years that you've put in uh, for the CRA. And, uh, and thank you for the great team that you work with. Um, that's all I have. I look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. No second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. Motion carries. Thank you.